Goedemiddag. Heeft iedereen honger? Ja. Ik ook. Don't worry, I'll take this in English. Uh, I'm from Sweden. I talk Dutch. That's weird. My father is Dutch, and I have a Dutch last name. Anyway, I'm not here to talk about me. I'm here to talk about the source element. Uh, which is actually two elements. One for audio and video, and one for picture. They're not quite the same, and I will explain this. But first, since you all love history, I will give you a, a history lesson. Uh, back in 2007, Anne van Kesteren, who then worked at Opera, sent an email to the What Working Group mailing list proposing a video element. And we had an experimental implementation of this element uh, in an internal Opera build. The API was as simple as you could imagine it being. It had only play, pause, and stop. And today, the API is quite complex. A few weeks later, Maciej Matsoviak from Apple also sent a more elaborate proposal for a video element. They were also very interested in bringing video to HTML. And Ian Hickson, who edited the HTML spec, then added the video element to the spec, and at the same time also added the source element to do codec negotiation. What does that mean? Uh, if you have a video file, it will typically have a stream of video and a stream of audio, and they are both encoded in a particular codec and then put in a container format. For instance, uh, <coughs> H.264 and AAC in an MP4 container or Theora and Vorbis in an OG container. These were the formats that were supported at the time, but by different browsers. And so for, to let the browser download only the file that it supports, you could use the source element with the source and type attributes. And the, you specify the actual codecs in, the, in a parameter in the MIME type. The first proposal for the picture element uh, was my colleague Bruce Lawson. He wrote a blog post. Uh, actually, it was not strictly the first proposal for picture that had been discussed on the mailing list, but I think it's the first proposal to reuse the source elements from video for picture. <coughs> His thinking was that web developers already knew how to use source. Let's reuse that mechanism. Uh, and as you can see in his markup, the picture element has an alt attribute. And you would put in an IMG merely for fallback in older browsers. So the picture would be the new IMG. And eventually you, would, you wouldn't need the fallback. This is not how it ended up being. I will explain later. In 2012, Edward O'Connor from Apple sent a proposal to the www.style mailing lists proposing image set function in CSS. Uh, back then, Apple were introducing retina screens, that is, high resolution screens, and they wanted to have images on the web look pretty as well, not just for their native apps. Uh, and this was an idea to let the browser download a high-resolution image if it had a, a higher-resolution screen and download a regular image if you had an old screen. And he also noted that the same trick can be used for HTML if we just add a new attribute on IMG. So that's what Ian Hickson did the same year. He added the source set attribute to IMG. Uh, where you can put a list of URLs and some descriptors. Now, these descriptors in this example with W and H are not the same as the W descriptor that is implemented today. 
These were actually more like media queries to do art direction. And today you use the media attributes on source instead. And the W descriptor has different semantics. I will explain this later. At this time, there were lots of uh, discussion and arguments about source set versus picture, and the arguments went back and forth and in circles for uh, about two years, I think. And every few months, new proposals were popping up. Um, one of the later proposals were source n, which was a set of attributes on IMG to solve all of the use cases. Uh, the reason it was using attributes was I argued that the loading model that video uses is actually pretty complicated to get right in the implementation because it is asynchronous, which has edge cases like what happens if the DOM tree is modified while the algorithm runs? Hmm, it's not it's easy to get right in the implementation. Uh, and I argued that using attributes, or just one attribute, would be much simpler in the implementation. Um, but Cornel Lesinski then showed that it was possible to design an asynchronous resource selection algorithm, even if you were using elements. And that resolved some of the complexity. So in 2000, actually on my birthday, I sent out uh, a proposal to re to a new approach for the picture element, where it's the IMG that is the active element. And I took inspiration from the data list element and the input elements that were already present in HTML. With data list, you can add uh, options for an input element, but it's not the data list element that is the new widget, it's still the input element. You just augment the input element with some more information. And if we then rename the tags and uh, change the structure a bit, we can get back to the original picture proposal syntax-wise but have a very, very different processing model that was simpler to implement in browsers. And it seems like a minor change on the face of it, but it turned out to be the last hurdle to resolve before browsers could all agree to implement this. So that was the history lesson. I've omitted a lot, a lot of it just to keep it shorter. Uh, I will discuss the processing model. As I said, these elements are different, which means that the processing model is different. I will highlight a few key differences. First, an example for video. Media elements, that is video and audio, they try each source element in, in the DOM order. So it starts at the top, and it checks, do I support this source element? It first looks at the attributes that are specified. In this case, it has a bogus type attribute. So we'll skip over to the next source element and look at its attributes. And that one only has source, so then in the browser will try to download that resource and try to play it. Now, as you might imagine, that one is a 404, so it cannot be played. But the algorithm doesn't stop there. It's when it realizes that, OK, I cannot play this resource, I will then try the next source element. And this makes the selection algorithm asynchronous. And there is opportunity for JavaScript to change the DOM while this is happening. Uh, <coughs> And I wrote te some test cases for Opera back in when we implemented this. It's almost 10 years ago now. And still today, nobody, no browser actually passes all of the test cases, which goes to show that it's uh, difficult to get right. 
Anyway, uh, a video that uses source elements is never in a failing state. It's always either in a playing state or, or a, I would just say, a loaded state or a waiting state. If, it if you reach the end of the list of source elements, it's in network no source, which means that it's, if you insert a new source element with JavaScript, that will be evaluated as well. For picture, however, it uses, it also goes over the list of source elements in DOM order. But the difference is that it only looks at the markup or the DOM. So in this case, it skips over the first source element because the type attribute is bogus. And it skips over the second source element because the media attribute evaluates the false. But it selects the third source element, the 404 one, because it doesn't have any attributes that says skip over me. Uh, and it, when the browser later realizes that I can't show this image, what happens is that it shows a broken image. It doesn't continue uh, the selection algorithm at that point. What does this mean for the responsiveness? So if the environment changes, for instance, if you resize the browser window, will a different resource be selected? For video, no. It sticks to what it has selected until you call the load method or you change the source attribute on the video tag itself. But picture, of course, is responsive. It was by design supposed to show a different image if you resize the browser or if you zoom in or whatever. And there is no load method on IMG. What about DOM mutations? In this example, we have a bit of markup with a, just two source elements. It's pretty simple. And then I have a script that, when the video has ended, playback, I go over the list of source elements and change its source attributes. Now, if I didn't have the last line of this script, then it would still show the previous ended video. It would not cause a load by itself. You need to call the load method explicitly. The picture element doesn't actually render the image. It's the IMG inside it that renders the image. The picture element is just like a span. It's a regular inline. So if you were to give it a border, it would render like the one on the right side, uh, like if you had a span. So in, typically, you will want to target the IMG element and not the picture element. You can style the picture element, uh, but you just need to be aware of what it's doing. On the left side, there is a video. Uh, and since the video element is what shows the video, it's itself a replaced element. It gets the border around it. Let's talk about the media attribute. In 2007, the media attribute was added for source. Uh, for video. And I couldn't actually find any discussion about why it was added. And it wasn't controversial back then. Uh, what you can do with it is that you put in a media query and the resource selection algorithm can skip over source elements if the media query evaluates to false. However, since video is not responsive, that doesn't do you any good if the user goes full screen, for instance. 
So in 2004, the media attribute was removed again for, from source uh, when it was used for audio and video. And instead, if you want to have responsive video, you need to use that in JavaScript or use a network protocol like Dash, which can swap out the video stream on the fly uh, over the network. But what is the media attribute for when you use picture? It's called art direction. Uh, I don't remember who minted this term, but uh, it's what the spec calls this use case. Uh, the typical example is if you have uh, a wide image for big screens and you want to crop it for smaller screens. Like on the left side, you have a, like a zoomed in view of the wolf so you can see it clearly. Otherwise, it would just be a tiny thing at the top. Uh, you use the media attributes to target different breakpoints and have different layouts. And you don't necessarily need to only use the width media features. You can also use uh, orientation or aspect ratio, etc. Anything that you can use in at media in CSS. The source set attribute uh, is, can only be used for picture. That is, the sor when source element is in a picture element. When you use source in video or audio, you can only use the source attribute instead. What is source set for? Uh, remember, remember retina screens. The if you, have, if you want to support, have crisp images for high resolution screens, you need a bigger image. But you don't necessarily need to give that big image to everyone, because that's typically based, wasted bandwidth for uh, devices that have low resolution. So then you use the X descriptor in source set to describe this. Uh, and when you use X descriptors, the source attribute on IMG is added as a 1X candidate. Uh, so you don't need necessarily need to repeat it in source set. The candidates in source set can be put in any order. It doesn't change the processing if you were to reverse the 1.5X and 2X in this example. The syntax of source set is just a comma-separated list of a URL and a descriptor. So to parse it, you just split on commas, and then you split on white space, and then you're done. Right? Mm, no. Not so fast. It's actually pretty complicated, because URLs can contain commas. Uh, a data URL, for instance, always has a comma. So if you were to split on spaces, you would get this wrong. And also, we want to be able to introduce more complex descriptors in the future that themselves might contain spaces or commas. So the source set parser ha actually has a state machine to basically tokenize the descriptors. Uh, and in this case, the first candidate would be dropped on the floor because it has an unknown descriptor, and other.png will get selected instead. What about the sizes attributes? Source has a sizes attribute. Uh, it's different from the link elements that Joa was talking about. It informs the browser how big the image is going to be in the layout. Uh, and you may think, doesn't the browser already know that? Not necessarily at the time the browser wants to start downloading the image. When you load the page, the browser hasn't yet downloaded your, all of your style sheets. 
but it may still want to start downloading of your images. And at that point, it doesn't know the layout of the page. But you still want to start your image downloads. You have talked about the preload scanner. And the solution for responsive images needed to work with the preload scanner uh, for it to be acceptable for the browser vendors. They didn't want to disable this optimization for images because that would be an obvious regression. Uh, I will not explain the preload scanner since you already know what it does. Uh, however, uh, a case that Joe didn't cover is document.writes, which uh, I think is uh, one of the typical cases where that are explained why scripts are blocking the HTML parser. Document.writes can change, or insert characters in the network stream, basically, and change what the rest of the document means. So if you insert the start of a comment, you can comment out the rest of the uh, HTML page, which is uh, quite different DOM compared to if you don't run that script, or if you were to try to run it asynchronously. But if we consider if we didn't have the preload scanner, would sizes still be needed? Yes, it would, because as I said earlier, style sheets might not have downloaded yet when the browser wants to download images. So you don't need scripts to get into this situation. You just need an external style sheet. But what about if you don't need and have any external style sheets either? you would actually still need sizes. In this example, I have a regular table. And as you may know, tables shrink to fit based on their content. So if you have an image at the top and an image in a later cell, the, the width of the later cell depends on the, the first image. So without sizes, the browser would need to wait for the first image to have downloaded before it can start uh, the download of the second image. But with the sizes attributes, we can give it a heads up uh, earlier and say, this is my intended size of this image. So how do you use these, the sizes attributes? It's used together with the W descriptor in source set. Uh, and when you use the W descriptors, the source attributes on IMG is not actually added as a candidate. So you need to re repeat that and specify its width. The W descriptor gives the amount of pixels in the image in the resource itself. And in the sizes attribute, you have uh, a list of media conditions and a CSS length. And the media conditions will probably match up with your breakpoints in your CSS. Uh, it is possible to do kind of the same thing in, with the uh, media queries and X descriptors. However, that would be uh, pretty complicated for the web developer. And if you put the math for calculating which, uh, which media queries to write on the web developer instead of letting the browser do the calculations. With the source set and sizes, you can just specify, OK, I have these images, and these are my breakpoints and sizes. And then the browser takes that into account, and the user's screen's device pixel density into account, and then it selects the, an appropriate image to download. 
in this illustration, you have three different layouts. One with uh, three columns for wide screens, two columns for medium screens, and one column for narrow screens. Now, you may notice that the smallest device doesn't have the smallest image. It's actually the tablet that has the smallest image here. So it's not as simple as the bigger the device, the bigger the image. It can be more complicated depending on your layouts and your breakpoints. The sizes attributes is using CSS syntax. It is a comma-separated list of media condition and a CSS length. And at the end, you specify uh, just a CSS length that acts as a default if all of the media conditions evaluate to false. A difference between sizes and media is that media has a media query and sizes can only use a media condition. What is the difference? A media condition cannot use the keywords like print, screen, all, etc. You can only use the stuff that is in parentheses. Uh, you can use any CSS unit that you like. The M unit is evaluated against the default font size. It's not evaluated against the computed font size. And this is the same as in media queries. And again, it's because the style sheets may not have loaded yet. You don't know what the computed font size is at this point. Since sizes uses CSS syntax, it supports CSS syntaxy things like escapes or uh, <coughs> a feature that CSS has is that you can skip the parser skips over entire blocks of unknown things. This is an invalid example, but the behavior is not to select the 100px, which a naive non-CSS implementation might do, because it uh, keeps track of, uh, of blocks. So it skips over the entire first block, including the 100px, and discards that. And then it selects the 200px. Uh, and the backslash is perfectly valid. It's not, no problem. And the 300px is ignored because it has already selected a, a value. And the reason it is a bit forgiving like this, instead of just ignoring the entire attribute if it has an error, is for future compatibility. We want to be able to extend this attribute with new syntax and still be able to give a fallback value for older browsers or current browsers. Type is simple. You can use it for both uh, source in video and source in picture. It's a media type. Uh, the new thing for picture is that it allows you to use new image formats, even if that format doesn't have universal support. Previously, it would take a long time for, for instance, PNG to get wide adoption by web developers because you, there was no point in using it unless it was actually really well supported everywhere. Today, you can start using a new image format if the only one or two browsers support it. Uh, this is uh, Fliff, it's a new image format being in development right now. It's not supported anywhere, so you can't use it yet. But it's uh, really exciting, you should go check it out. Let's talk more about double downloads. 
what are they? It's when the browser, for some reason, downloads two resources when you had expected only one. Today, it shouldn't happen mostly, but due to bugs, it does anyway. This is an obvious example where per spec is supposed to result in a double download. You have an IMG element in markup, and in a later script, you change the source attribute. Now, when the browser sees the IMG element, it starts the first download of one image. And the script runs later and downloads a, di a different resource. The other case is if you create a script, or you create an IMG element with script, and you set either the source attributes twice, or you set the source attributes and the source set attributes, or if you create a, a more complex picture element with all the source elements. When does the download start? When does the browser figure out, OK, now I should go select an image and download it? We do this with microtasks, or it's supposed to happen in microtasks. With, and microtasks allow the current script to finish running, and then the microtask is run. So the resource selection for IMG is defined in the spec to happen in a microtask. Uh, I believe this is not yet implemented in WebKit, so this example will probably trigger a double download uh, if you try it in WebKit. Hopefully, it will be fixed at some point. The other case that might cause problems is uh, if you use Meta Viewport. Now, if you go back to the preload scanner case, uh, in order to avoid a double download, the preload scanner needs to have the same idea about what the viewport size is as by the time the IMG element is actually inserted into the DOM. Uh, since this element, the meta viewport thing, can change the layout size of the, your viewport, it changes how media queries are evaluated if they depend on the viewport size. Uh, I believe Chromium has had at least one such bug where the preloader had a different idea. It, it used the initial viewport, basically. Time for a quiz. Uh, anyone have Android 2.3? No, sorry. <laughs> uh, these two browsers had a bug in their HTML parser. So what do you think will happen with this markup in these browsers? Anyone? What's that? Yeah, kind of. It's, it uh, honors the picture, but it drops the source element. Uh, and the reason for this is that they supported source in video, but due to how they implemented the source element in the parser, it would just be dropped on the floor if they found a source tag in other contexts. And this creates a problem if you want to polyfill the picture element, because there is nothing in the DOM. You can't uh, go over the zero source elements. But for IE9, there is a workaround. Since it inserts source elements uh, in videos, you can use conditional comments and use an actual video element inside picture. And this is uh, something that picture fill uh, supports, the, I think, the biggest polyfill for the picture element. However, for Android 2.3, there is no workaround. So the recommendation there is just use source set on the IMG as a fallback. Uh, it's pretty ugly, I know. We could have resolved this by renaming the source element to something else. Uh, but for some reason, people prefer to be consistent with uh, video.
Let's take a more complex example. Uh, since sizes uh, only supports width, you cannot specify, I want this height of the image. Uh, and in the same, same way, source set only supports specifying the widths of the image. It doesn't yet support the heights. How do you use these features if you want to constrain on both the width and the heights? Is it possible? Uh, let's look at this demo. If you're aware of... Oh, hover doesn't work. Yes, it does. This is my son bicycling. He's two years. Uh, in this case, the image is height constrained if the viewport is wide. And it's width constrained for narrow viewports. And this is possible to uh, specify with source sets and sizes. Even though you can only s give the width of the image as inputs, nothing prevents you from using height-based media queries or media conditions in sizes. And nothing prevents you from using height-based units uh, to specify the width. So to implement this, uh, you can use the aspect ratio media query and give the aspect ratio of the image and then multiply 100 viewport heights uh, with the aspect ratio of the image. And this will give this uh, effect. However, in the future, we will probably also add an H descriptor to do this, uh, the previous example, more straightforwardly and uh, also support it in cases where you don't know the aspect ratio at all. Other future additions uh, that we have planned are sub-resource integrity, uh, which allows the browser to ref refuse the image if something has tampered with it before, uh, if it's basically different from what you had expected. Uh, also, declarative lazy loading is something that we want to solve for images so that the browser doesn't go download all of the image in the page and only download the critical images or above the fold images. And when we have lazy loading, uh, there's also less of a reason to specify sizes. Because if, it's, if the image is loaded late, then you, the browser probably has layout information. And it can uh, get the size of the image from your CSS. And there are also new image formats in the works uh, that's may or may not reduce the need for using markup at all. You, maybe we will just go back to using IMG source and specify, use this fancy image that does all of these features for us. And that's all I have. Thank you. Let's have a seat. Thanks. You sure know your thing about picture and source. Uh, <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, some questions from the audience. Mm -hmm. um, and also, uh, this thought of, of all these versions for images for like 1x, 2x, is, is, is this, I heard you mentioning some things in the end, like this might have different solutions in the future? Yeah. Uh, the FLIF image format is uh, it's a lossless image format that uh, you can decode only part of the image and still get a usable result. OK. Uh, so in theory, you could specify one high resolution image, uh, and the browser could stop downloading when it has enough of the image data. Right. Right. Uh, however, 
that's uh, more of a long-term solution because adding a new image format is something that needs changes throughout the pipeline. Yeah. And changing how network stuff behaves is also uh, more complicated than uh, yeah. adding a new element to HTML. But we might in future see it slowly going back again to a more maybe, yeah, maybe. Sim simpler markup. Yeah. Okay. We, we will probably be stuck with the picture element forever. It, we cannot remove it. No. But because it has maybe been used. in 20 years we won't use it anymore. <laughs> I don't know. It's good to know. <laughs> <laughs> um, what did you mean with the auto sizes? Okay. So. Uh, that's with Fliff. With, that's, yeah. that's with Fliff. That's no, uh, it, it doesn't need Fliff. Uh, okay. It needs a lazy loading uh, mechanism. Okay. If, so the sizes gives the browser a heads up on the intended layout size of the image. Uh, but by the time the browser has downloaded your, your CSS, you could specify the image size in your CSS instead. Okay, thank you. And uh, then you wouldn't need to use the sizes attribute at all if you. Yeah, so. So the sizes is mostly yeah. an, to allow images to download early. Yeah, that's right. And if you want to download them late, then there's no point in using sizes. Thank you. I had a question from uh, Luke Lammers. He says in, in browsers, uh, Chrome at least, source set only works scaling up from a mobile screen to a desktop. And why not also the other way around? Uh, okay, so the implementation in Chromium is for source sets, it tries to uh, not download images that are not useful. Like, if you start out with a big viewport, you need a big uh, image from source set. <laughs> and if you then later shrink the viewport, there is no point in down also downloading a smaller image, because you already have a good version that you can scale down. Downloading a smaller image would just be wasted resources. Right. That's the idea. Yeah. And when you use source sets, the, all of the images in source set are supposed to be uh, the same image, just different size of them. Right, and you also talked about this, this feature that we're calling all Art Direction. Yeah. And uh, do you think it's already used enough or that it maybe should be used more in, in uh, modern web? Uh, people were using art direction before the picture element existed. They yeah. were using background images in CSS or whatever hacks they could think of to get good content on smaller screens. Yeah. Uh, so I think it's, there is adoption, uh, but I, the X and the W descriptors are more widely used than the picture element itself, yeah. according to use counter data that Chromium has. Yeah. Last, time, last time I checked, at least. I don't know <laughs> okay. if it has changed recently. <laughs> okay. It also it touches a little bit on a question by Hing Chung Lee. Uh, he says, why use the sizes attributes at all? Uh, doesn't it go against separation of markup and design? Yes, it does. Uh, the reason is uh, for performance, lo page loading performance. Uh, it's, it puts layout information in your HTML, and that's in itself a bad thing, but it's, it's a necessary evil uh, in order to have pages load fast. Right, because you also talked about like HTML, uh, you can use like CSS syntax in your code, and uh, yeah. it, is there a risk of this mixing up too much that it gets confusing for developers or? Uh, maybe, but adding a different syntax for sizes would probably, uh, if we used a new syntax for sizes, then you probably wouldn't be able to use CSS features like calc. Right. And those are useful as well. Okay. I want to thank you very much. And uh, another you. big applause for Simon. <laughs>